Thank you for joining us once again as we take a look at the one year of government. I'm your host, Travis Bruce, and at this time I'm joined by the Honorable Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr. Thank you so much for being here with us. Pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, you know, as we look at the one year, so much has happened for the, this Irfanari led PPPC administration. But I want to ask you specifically, in a nutshell, can you tell me? Perhaps what are your thoughts on the one year, how you would have grooved in uh, being the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport? Um, it's, it's been an exciting and interesting uh, year already. Uh, it was tough going at the beginning because, you know, when we came in to the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport, there wasn't even really a ministry. Uh, the previous administration, they had relegated culture, youth and sport into departments within ministries. So there wasn't even a substantive ministry on its own, that's one. Uh, two, I also saw that um, they didn't have a, a, a voice in the cabinet either. Uh, the, the previous administration didn't see it fit enough to have uh, the voice of culture, youth and sport to be a part of the cabinet decision making. And that's important. It's important from the point of view of how do you shape policy, how do you build um, the programs that you need so that it, it is then translated into budgetary allocations and it's designed in a way where you've got input with your cabinet colleagues and other ministers so that they can tailor it in a way that it, effect, uh, it impacts people um, in the widest possible way and in the deepest possible way. Uh, and that's been one of the significant changes that um, has happened in the country uh, because that's how our country is structured. The absence of that voice and at the executive um, level had really been a, a had been destructive, um, especially for the elimination of uh, the voice of young people um, within executive decision making. Uh, so not only did you have not have young people making decisions, that just as part of the overall structure in which decisions are made on behalf of the people of the country in that executive way, in that political executive way, um, it was absent, it disappeared. Also, when I got there, even within the, the ministry, the departments themselves, um, there was a lot of uh, rifts. There was a lot of conflict in turn assign, um, that was destructive to cooperation and being able to have programs being effective and people able to work smoothly with each other. Um, directors didn't get along with the uh, permanent secretary or the deputy permanent secretary and um, they always had a, a, an ability to go and second guess decisions or go and jump persons who were in uh, key decision making in the structure. So the entire um, organogram of the departments had been um, ineffective uh, because of just that internal conflict and that internal sign that was existing. And it, it, it was really um, a cesspool, a cesspool of um, unproductivity. Uh, I'm happy to say that to report to the people of the country that that no longer exists, that um, our ministry is, is working well now. Um, we've got a good structure. It's it's very effective. We're focused a lot on our goals. We're focused on our, our objectives. Um, I'm personally focused a lot on reform and our projects. Um, that's one of the reasons why you see our ministry just performing so well. It's performing well because our internal structure is working well. Um, that comes from strong leadership. Uh, and not only leadership from, from the minister, but also um, leadership within the structure. But it, it starts with the tone that the leader of the organization sets. Any organization, it doesn't matter what it is, small, medium, large. Ours is a large ministry. Um, it's, we've almost, we're close to $4 billion now. Um, and we've got about three, 400 people working as part of our various uh, departments and all across the country, um, institutions, etc. All of that has to be coordinated and it requires strong leadership. Minister, just listening to you there, it sounds as though you went into office knowing exactly what needed to be tackled, uh, fixing what was inherited, more or less. Um, perhaps you can tell me specifically about two major projects that uh, 
the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport is happy that they would have delivered or rolled out to benefit all Guyanese. I know we've seen the advancement of sport. Perhaps that is something that you will touch on. But tell us about two areas that you are most proud of as we uh, celebrate or commemorate one year of this government. Um, one is, is, is in building trust. That's not projects. It's of how our country is organized, it's operating. It's building trust with the associations. I think that was pretty significant in what, what we did. Outside of what we did within the ministry, um, I thought that was all, also pretty significant uh, within the associations, the sports associations, because the, in Guyana is a country that we love sport. Um, it, doesn't, it may be various, various kinds of sports, but we love sport. And um, those sports have representatives. They have those associations, and we wanted to build a working relationship with those associations. But relationships are built on trust, and it's one of the, the things that we did early uh, that I think that has really proven itself over time within this year to show that it was a good decision. Um, but that to be able to build trust is not only about you know, meeting and talking to each other. That's the first step because that's a, a way where you will be able to get from them what are some of the critical areas that you need to work on from your government, from the government standpoint and the allocation of resources um, and programs. But also, um, you've got to back that up with showing them that this is what we can do, what we can't do, what we would like to do in the future. And a number of the projects have already started as it relates to sports and sports facilities. Um, we've been working on the facilities that, we, that falls under the ministry that's part of the National Sports Commission. When we got in there, it was, it was in bad shape. You know, they, they've, the previous administration really allowed, um, it, it was characterized by, by neglect and it, it, it ended up becoming um, an example of decrepitude that shouldn't really be something that the state should ever have that as part of its own facilities, the ministry's own facilities, that uh, this is the example that we set. Because people have expectations, you know, they have expectations about um, being able to use facilities that fall under the care of the government. And um, we're, tr we're now really advancing aggressively uh, within the framework, the legal framework and financial framework, making sure that we get our projects going to really enhance it so that when people come and they have that experience playing sports, especially for the, the sports that we've prioritized, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, that they have a good experience. The other thing that I wanted to touch on as, as we're here is, is we've, we, while a lot of times there's an emphasis on sport, um, community grounds don't technically fall under a sport, um, but it's part of what we do as a ministry. And we've made some very, very important and different decisions that uh, will translate into significant outcomes. Um, instead of doing small uh, allocations to community grounds, which the previous administration, they just had a neglect for community grounds. Um, we've done, we're now doing larger allocations for uh, community grounds because we know that this is a, a safe space and we want to build it to be a safe space for young people and the community. Older people, middle-aged people, people who want to just come to a safe space where they can hang out or exercise or use for other different kinds of social purposes. Um, this is something significant that we've done differently and uh, we're now in the process of going through our procurement work and, and uh, project execution work and by the end of the year most of that is going to be completed and I think most people will be able to see um, 25 grounds that have really changed in their outlook and its usage and, and um, how they feel, how communities feel about that community ground. Minister, as we're coming down to program time, I want to ask you it's a twofold question. Are you firstly satisfied with all that would have been accomplished under your purview? And secondly, what can we expect from the Minister of Culture and Sport in the second year in office? No, we're never going to be satisfied. You know, I've 
said it to the ministry, I've said it to the public. We want the public to judge us, right? I don't want to, to judge myself. Um, I think that that was the mistake that the previous administration did. Uh, they gave themselves A grades. I'm not going to do that for our ministry, and I've said that to all of the folks within our ministry that we're going we're gonna to work aggressively every single day towards driving our programs, driving our projects, making sure that people feel and can touch the ministry all across the country, that they're impacted in a, in a beneficial way. Um, uh, how, what our ministry does, by what our ministry does. But we want to get the judging of what we're doing and how we're doing it, which is equally important uh, by the people of the country. Because uh, in, in five years, they get to make a choice again um, about the, our, our style of leadership, the type of leadership that we're bringing in terms of direction and allocation of resources, etc. Um, that's going to be defining in five years. So I'm never going to be satisfied, and I've, I've made it a condition of how we're going to do our business, that we're not going to be grading ourselves, but that we're going to be working on our objectives, setting goals for ourselves, and working very hard towards like driving that, that aggressively. Um, what's going to be very exciting over the next couple, next few, few months and coming into the new year is uh, one, we're going to be starting our sports academy. Um, we are in the finalization um, stage of that. Uh, we're going to have a sports conference uh, to go through that with all the sports associations because we're doing this in partnership with the sports associations as well. Uh, and uh, we want to make sure that the education part of it is, is, is important, training and education. We're also going to be rolling out um, our, our youth uh, training centers and institutes um, reformed uh, youth innovation and entrepreneurship grants so m money for businesses for young people but we're not just gonna leave them on their own we want to make sure that we stay with them mentor them and we're building uh, associations and partnerships um, with the chambers the various chambers of commerce so they're working with us because they've got a They've got a, a, a repository um, of wealth of experience and, and um, knowledge and just being able to help to mentor young people when they enter business so that they don't repeat some of the mistakes that, they've, that they would have, themselves would have made. Uh, so we want to see that happen as well. And then the, the other part that's um, going to be important too is uh, our regional cultural schools. So we're working on some on that right now, so that all of the within five additional regions, you'll have um, young people being able to do art and drama and uh, dance and that kind of activity um, and music, uh, and that'll feed into Region Four where we have you know more of the schools that are that are um, already existing. Um, and then one other thing that we have, I have on the program is the night school. Um, we want to have uh, a night school in every region. The intention is for the, the young people who have been, who didn't get their five CXEs and that they didn't uh, or may have not gotten the kind of grades that they were looking for, they get a second chance uh, so that they can rewrite their five CXEs or maybe write a few that they didn't get the kind of grades that they were looking for. So that's going to be rolling out soon as well. That sounds like phenomenal uh, programs there being rolled out by the ministry. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by and sharing with us all these vibrant ideas that we will be able to benefit, that all Guyanese will be able to benefit from. Yeah, looking forward. All right, then thank you also to you, our listeners and viewers of this program.